My name is Rachel Lebo. I'm one of the informationists with the Welch Medical Library, and we will be going over that new PubMed interface today. As usual, when you want to access PubMed, you always want to go through it from our website. Um, the main reason for that is because then you get uh, connected with our subscriptions and our holdings. So if you're looking for that full text, you can easily um, come back to our catalog and get access through that or through an interlibrary loan. The link we want to use is the one that says PubMed. We still have a PubMed legacy link on here, but that is officially retired and will no longer be updated. So please just use this PubMed link under the literature databases from our welch.jhmi.edu website. The first thing you notice when we get into new PubMed is the look of it. It is a lot uh, more modern looking um, and a little more pleasant um, to look at as well. When we go down, we still find a lot of our favorite tools that you might be familiar using. Under our magnifying glass, you'll still find the clinical queries and single citation matcher. And under explore, we still have our mesh database link as well. You'll see we do still have a link to legacy, uh, but again, it is not being updated and eventually uh, will most likely go away. Below that, we have our trending articles and the latest literature that you can search in popular journals in the NCBI information below. The first thing I'll point out is the login. This is for the My NCBI account. If you don't have one yet, I highly recommend you sign up for it because a lot of the functionality in new PubMed um, will require you to be logged in. For instance, if you wanted to email yourself some citations, uh, it will only kind of allow you to do that if you are logged into your MyNCBI. So I wanna do that quickly so I can show you some stuff. All right, so the first thing we have is our search string and I'm just going to put something in to get started on our search. I'm going to just type in peanut allergy. And we get into our uh, display, our results display. Now there's a few things here that we can look at, but I want to wait um, until I have um, explore a little more and then we'll come back to this page. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into this advanced setting. This advanced setting was where you could always see your search history and legacy. And that's the same thing uh, for today. If I go down to my peanut allergy, um, I can now click on this carrot key right here. And this shows my search details. Previously on Legacy, that would have been on the front page on the right hand side. That's now found under this carrot key. So I can see how PubMed translated my simple search of peanut allergy using automatic term mapping. And I'm going to come back to that automatic term mapping to show you how the algorithm has changed on how it does it um, between legacy PubMed and new PubMed. I wanna show you where your search details are. So if for some reason you're getting some weird results, go into your details and see how PubMed has translated your search to find the answer. The other thing um, is if we wanted to add more to our search, I'm going to just quickly type in, um, another concept here. I'm gonna add another uh, concept here quickly to show you some other stuff. So obviously we can just type it in that query box. We also still have our um, filters up here. If you just wanted to search um, by a specific journal, you can always um, select it from that box type in your term and add it to your query box. And then we can add it to our history. Or if I hover on this arrow, I can go back to my search and that will take me back into the main PubMed to do my search. So there's a few ways to search still, which is nice. Now before, if we wanted to add concepts together, we would have a box to the left that would say add, add, and we could have a drop down menu to select our Boolean operators to put them in our query. That has significantly changed. We now needed to use these action dots right here. If we click on this, this is where we're finding our add to query now. 
if I add that, it populates up in my box up here. Now, if I go to my next concept and click on those action dots, this is where my Boolean operators will now appear is when I click on that second concept. So if I want, want to add it with and, I'll just click that. It will populate it up here with my Boolean operators. Key thing on new PubMed is you do want your Boolean operators to be in all caps. Uh, PubMed will change the search a little bit if you put it in lower case. So make sure when you're using your Boolean operators, your ORs and ANDs, that they are in all caps. All right, from here, I'm going to search. Hover, go back to search. And that should bring me back into regular, into my uh, results display. So there's a few things added to our results. We now have a results slider for the year. If we kind of hover on one of the markings, we can see in 2011, there were 75 articles on this specific topic. So we can go that way and we can use our slider to change our year range if we would like. We still have the option below <clears throat> to change that as well using a one year, five year, 10 year, or a custom range right down here. So we can still change it that way as well. If we wanted a custom range, we could easily go and just type in our range from here. Okay. So then I can kind of select the dates I want in the years. And so then we get it filtered down to 516. We have our other filters over here. For instance, if you're looking for a specific article type, if you wanted to look at systematic reviews, you have them under this article type. If you don't see one you like, you can always go to this additional filters, and this is where they are all located. So we can easily click and show them to have them appear on that left hand side. Same with languages. journals and such. They do have a new filter as well that they have added to new PubMed called article attribute. And the filter located here is associated data. If I were to filter down to this, my results would be results that have associated data either with them as supplementary uh, concepts or as a link to like clinicaltrials.gov. So for instance, if I were to click on this one, I can go into my um, article display. And if I go over here, my right hand, I have this page navigation. I can click on that associated data. It will zoom me to where it is. And I see I can find that data at clinicaltrials.gov and have the direct link. So it's a nice new filter that we can narrow down if we're specifically looking for data um, to back up some stuff. So this is a nice new feature on there for us. The other thing while I'm in the um, article display is along with this page navigation, we can still see uh, similar ar articles. If this was indexed with mesh, we would have one of those, but it's all kind of layered on top of each other now. So we have this right page navigation. The other things we have is we can easily scroll through our results using our next result and previous result. If I just hover, we can get a preview of what the next article will be. Same with previous, we can go back, which is kind of nice as well. Going through the Welch website, we still have our find it button. So you can access that full text through our catalog. Uh, we have a couple other new buttons here. We have our share options. Now you can easily share an article on Twitter or Facebook. And we also get a permalink if you wanted to share this article with somebody and give them the exact link to find it. So we have those. We still have our site options. <clears throat> and we can cite just in a couple options. But if you wanted to quickly cite something in an email or a paper, uh, you can easily do that and copy it. Other options we have would be to save it. You wanted to save your citation. You wanted to email it to yourself. Again, this is where you would have to put in the email you want to email it to, and you can send it. But again, this is seems to only be working right now if you're logged into your MyNCBI account. 
So just make sure you're that, and then you can send the email. Or you can send it to your clipboard if you like to use that function, your bibliography, a citation manager, or a collections in your MyNCBI. If I go back to my search results, I have a few differences here too. Let's say there's just a couple I wanted to save. So if I select them, so if you do like the clipboard feature, which some people do, they use it as kind of a yes pile, I can go to the send to and select clipboard. Clipboard used to be over on the right hand side. It now appears below your search box. If you decide to use it, you can access it right there. The other things you'll want to know is if you use a citation manager and you used to um, save it as a medline, um, in legacy, you'd come over here and you'd have a big file and you'd save it in the Medline format in order to import it into a citation manager like RefWorks or EndNote. They have changed that a little bit. Now, if we go to save and we have our selection or we can select all the results or just the results on our page, our format we wanna select now to export for a citation manager is PubMed. This is now what is called PubMed format. So when we click on that, we can create the file. It will save it as that TXT file that we can then import into our preferred citation manager. So that is a big change as well. A few other things that have changed um, is the use of the asterisk. Before you could put the asterisk after three characters and it would search the first 600 alternate endings for that root word. Now you can only use the asterisk after four characters. So if you were doing a search on like mobile app, you could not put the asterisk behind the app to get apps or application. You need at least four characters before you can use that, that asterisk. Likewise, it now searches unlimited, unlimited amounts of root endings. It does not stop after 600. So we no longer get that preview of what endings it searched. So just be cautious when you're using that asterisk that you need at least four characters and it will be unlimited searching. So always kind of be aware of where you're putting that asterisk and how you're using it. The other thing is your display options. It automatically will display by summary and actually by best match. This is going to be um, your default right here. The summary view will provide snippets um, of the articles. Let me go back to our main search here. All right, so I had it last done by publication date. So, I'm going to change it. so this is kind of your, your default. It's going to be summary and best match. And your, and your display per page will actually be 10. So before you go through stuff, maybe go through that display option and see what you want to change. The summary is not too bad. You get a little snippet of what the article is about, including um, the highlighting or bolding of the text that you used in your search strategy. If you like that abstract view, you can easily change that to the abstract view. You can sort by your best match, most recent publication date, journal, first author, and you can have more than 10 per page. I always like to have about 200 or something. But then we can just look through them that way. And you can change it. If you change it to that abstract view, you still will get your, um, you'll find that find it button right, easily, and you'll get the mesh terms that have been applied to those right away as well. So it's kind of a nice um, feature that you can switch between those however you prefer to use it. A couple other things in searching. Um, that ATM I talked about, um, there are a couple ways to turn it off. What ATM is, if you're not familiar, it's how PubMed kind of helps you in the background and it will map 
your search to first a mesh term, and then if it doesn't find a mesh term for it, it will broaden out um, like journals and author names. So it's kind of a way that PubMed tries to decipher what you're telling it. There are a couple ways to turn that off. If we want to put, um, we can put it in quotes that will turn it off easily. We can also um, use the, the field tag. So if you write, like that bracket TW, which will search most of that citation record, that will turn it off as well. And then using an, an asterisk will also turn that off. You'll see either way, I'm getting the same number of results. If you like to use a hyphen, PubMed will typically ignore that hyphen and just search it as um, our quotated version. So most punctuation will be ignored in PubMed. If we're doing phrase searching, um, we'll still want to put it in quotation marks like I showed you with the kidney allograft. Now, another thing we can do if, which we could not do in legacy PubMed, we can now use the asterisk within our quotation marks. We could not do that in legacy. So that's a nice new feature is being able to apply that asterisk within our quotation marks and being able to search it that way. So then we're getting injury, injuries, injured, et cetera. One of the main things I told you uh, was different in PubMed. I wanna show you a, get into legacy here quickly. Um, one thing I told you was that automatic term mapping and how that worked. So for instance, if I just type in a basic term, I'm not using the asterisk, the quotes, or field tag, because um, I don't want to turn it off, because I want to show you how to, what happens here. In Legacy PubMed, if I were to type in hemorrhage, it would use the automatic term mapping and do a search for me. I could come down, I would get 417,000 results. I could come down here to my search details, and I see it mapped to hemorrhage, the mesh term, and then it also searched the American spelling and the British spelling of hemorrhage in all fields for me, resulting in 417,000 plus results. Now, if I'm in PubMed, new PubMed, and I do that same search and do my search, <clears throat> I get over, almost 5 million results. If I go into this advanced, I can go down to my details. Remember, this is where search details lives now in this carrot. And I see that PubMed actually mapped it to blood, to hematology, it mapped it to hemorrhage, it mapped it to hematoma as well. So it's really, the, the algorithm for ATM has really been um, enhanced. I'll use that word. Um, it's gotten a lot bigger and so it can really make your search get out of hand very fast if you like to search this way. So keep that in mind. If you're getting a lot of results or some odd results, look at your search details and see how that new ATM algorithm is working on your search. Remember to turn this off. We can put it in quotes. We can use field tags or we can use that asterisk. So I could easily bring this down by doing a simple title abstract search. I'm gonna to go to my, add my history so you can see on this page and I can bring it down to 155,000 already. And my details show it only searched for hemorrhage in the title and abstract with the way I spelled it. So just keep that in mind um, in the background. The other main thing is if you're doing um, like a systematic review and you have over 10,000 results that you want to export to put into your citation manager. In legacy PubMed, you could export, let's say you have um, 20,000 results that you need to export. 
In legacy PubMed, you could export all 20,000 of those at one time. In new PubMed, you will be capped at 10,000. So ways to get around that is maybe if you um, filter it by date, then you can just kind of do dated chunks, you know, this year to this year, export, this year to this year, export. That way you get them all, but, but you can keep yourself organized while you're trying to export them to get all of them exported um, because you will be capped at only 10,000 in the new PubMed. Is there anything I may have not mentioned that you like to use in Legacy PubMed that you're wondering about or something I wasn't quite clear about that you uh, wanted me to show again? You can go ahead and put that in the chat. While you guys are doing that, if you do have questions, I'm going to pop into um, back to the Welch website here. And I do want to point out a few things. If you do have questions about um, PubMed or you're having troubles with your search, you can always go to this Find Your Informationist. When you are in here, you can easily um, search by name if you remember your informationist names, or you can search by your department too. You can easily find um, that and you can contact your information is to get help on PubMed or to get help with that search strategy. So don't be afraid to contact us. We are happy to help you as you're searching. The other thing we have from our main page here, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, we have these library guides. And these library guides are really great in helping too. We do have expert searching that will have PubMed search tips on it, as well as other databases. They'll go over, um, ways to find keywords, controlled vocabulary, information like that. We have citation management. We have a systematic review. We have a lot of different ones. So again, this is a great place uh, to come look for additional information, as well as our YouTube channel, where we have a lot of other recordings of classes we've taught in the past. Is there any questions? I don't see any yet. There are no questions. That's kind of all I wanted to show you today because there wasn't too much. Um, there's just a few little things. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, there's just a few little things I've changed uh, and a lot of background stuff. So I wanted to make sure you guys were all aware of that as you start working with this new PubMed. And if there are no other questions, I wanna thank you all for coming today and joining in this. And if, again, if you have any questions, go ahead and contact your informationist and um, we can work through you with your search and getting it through this new interface together. Thank you all for coming.